What's going on guys? Welcome to today's video where I'm going to show you my full shoulder workout, well at least a set from each exercise that I did, while doing a Q&A going over some good questions that you guys have asked across the last few videos that I've put out. So here we go. All right, the first question is, Chase, thanks for the great videos. I haven't seen any info on you for dead space in needles. I'm on 200 milligrams per week with test sip from the doctor, and I find that there's a good deal that are left in the tips of the needles. All right, so the thing here, it's a really simple fix. I mean, he's talking about the leftover oil that gets stuck in the end of the needle because the plunger doesn't go up into the needle, so you end up leaving a little bit in there. The super easy way to fix this is inject some air leave a little bit of air in your barrel and inject the air the air will push through the needle it'll push all the rest of the oil through the needle so that you're you're completely covered there um i know a lot of people i, I see it posted all the time like don't inject any air it'll go into your bloodstream and you'll die guys you need to inject like five to ten cc's of air into a vein that's a problem Injecting one milliliter, one cc, is not going to do anything. I've done it hundreds of times, no issues ever. Just chill out. It's not a big deal. <clears throat> Next question. What camera do you use? Well, I use an Osmo Pocket. DJI makes. It, it's, it's the same camera that's on my drone, but yeah, it's a pocket version of it. It's a great camera. can film in 4K, 2.5K, 1080p, whatever you want. It has a decent microphone on it. That's the one thing that I wish I could improve about the camera. But the thing that I really like the most about it is how, you know, inconspicuous it is. How I can just kind of set it up on a ledge and then use my phone to control it. That's what you see me, like, in this video right now. Like, I have my phone. You see me carry it around with me. I'm controlling the camera uh, with my phone. So, like, you see me right here. I'm grabbing my phone and right here I'm highlighting myself to tell it to follow me. And there it goes, it's following me across the room. Yeah, so it has like a little head on it that swivels and will follow you. And you can turn it with your phone without actually having to go to the camera to turn the camera. So it's a great camera, it's like, I think it's $300 or so. Um, it's super durable, I've dropped it plenty of times from pretty high up from the top of a squat rack and it came out fine. And if it broke, I would probably buy the same thing. I'd buy another one. What earphones are you using? Those are the Powerbeats Pro. I think they're great. They stay in um, amazingly well. Never had an issue with them falling out. Uh, the charge on them is uh, the best of any wireless headphone I've ever had. I, it's amazing how long the case stays charged, how long the earbuds stay charged. They're... They're worth $250. I think that they were worth every penny. Next one. Bro, did you ever get any acne issues? Can you make a video about that? It would be cool to see your insight. Acne. Acne. Getting zits. Well, you know, looking at this video, can you see much on my back there? No, not really. Every once in a while, I'll get like a little, a couple bumps here or there on like the side of my bicep around my shoulder area but really I don't get a whole lot of uh, zits or acne at all and I attribute that mostly to the fact that I pin very very frequently that's what I was telling you guys in another video like most of the side effects I feel come from you guys being scared to do injections on a daily basis like if you do injections spread out and only pin every like Monday and Friday or Monday and Thursday or whatever, that's going to be a huge, you're going to get a big spike in your hormones and then you're going to get a big dip down low in your hormones. And you're just going to be riding this roller coaster of hormones and your body's going to have trouble, you know, staying at a like homeostasis with that. And yeah, it's just not going to be a good time. You're going to get those kind of side effects and 
I, I mean, I tried it. I used to do it. I used to do, you know, pinning very infrequently. And yeah, when I was first getting into this whole thing, I, I did. I did break out a little bit. Never really on my face or anything like that. But um, it, I mean, it never really was like bad, bad, bad. But I mean, yeah, it, it's definitely the best that it's ever been. And I pin every single day. Next question. Why do you think Tren is a bad idea? So the thing about Tren is that it is, it is, I mean, next to Trest alone, but whoever uses that, it, it is the strongest steroid that we can use. It is the strongest thing in our arsenal. And because of that, it has the strongest, worst side effects. And... I mean, that's just something that you don't need to screw around with unless you're about to go on stage to compete or something like that. The only time I feel that Tren honestly should be used is maybe four to six weeks before a, uh, a show, before you get on stage and you're shredded as fuck. You should not be trying to use Tren to cut. You should not be using Tren if you're double-digit body fat percentages. You should not be using Tren for any of those reasons because it's going to bite you in the ass hard when it screws up your libido, when it screws up your sleep. It's going to wreck your blood work. It is just not worth it for something that a simple diet could handle. And I feel like that's one reason why a lot of people get on steroids is they think that they can just use gear instead of dieting and you know it just it never works out like I know way more people that are on steroids that are fat and out of shape and are not big and cut and shredded like I know way more people that look like they don't use steroids that use steroids than I do that do use steroids that look like they do where did you get that bowl so this person's talking about, you know, my bowls that I use when I eat out of. So those bowls you can get at Costco. I mean, the ones that are really big you can find on Amazon that I use, but the ones that I use most often are from Costco. Next question. Are you still just using plain white minute microwave rice? Yes, absolutely. I'm using instant white rice. And this has been brought up several times. People talking about like, well, I use this one because it has the lowest GI of all the rices. And uh, uh, why do you use that? It's got high GI. Isn't it? What's it like spiking your insulin six times a day? Guys, the GI index doesn't mean shit when you're eating a full, well-balanced meal. When you're eating, when you're combining proteins and fats with your carbs. So the GI index primarily is talking about carbs and how quickly they digest and how big of an insulin spike you get from it. Now, if I just ate a bowl of plain white rice, instant white rice, yes, I would get a big insulin spike off of that. But because I mix it with meat, I mix it with vegetables and fiber, I mix it with fruit fiber, and I mix it with a decent amount of fat, all those things combined lower the GI to a level that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the GI is of any one in particular food that you're eating when you're mixing it with a bunch of other foods and having a well-balanced meal. So stop it. Just shut up about the whole GI index. It's just, if you're worried about the GI index, like the only time you should be concerned about the GI of your food is eating post-workout. Like if you're that concerned, like my intra-workout shake which consists of, uh, you know, two scoops of cluster bomb, which is dextrose basically, and then it has, you know, EAAs, BCAAs, uh, creatine, and salt in it. That is very high on the GI index, and I want it to be during my workout so that all that shit gets shuttled to my muscles. I mean, I use insulin to push that shit into my muscles. So that's the only time you need to worry about that. So shut up about it. Okay, and the last question. Can you drink chicken stock or 
bone broth straight from the container. Well, yeah, you can. But you can also drink your pee straight from your dick. So, I mean, does that mean that you should? No, it's not. It's not going to taste good. Like, why would you want to drink that cold? If you want to drink it without putting it on your food, put it in a mug, heat it up, put it in the microwave, drink it like it's some kind of hot tea, and it'll be a lot more enjoyable than just trying to drink it out of the carton. So that's my advice to you. And that is the last question of the day. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Thank you for your support. Please leave your questions down below. Anything you've got. I appreciate you guys. I, I you know, love the comments, love the feedback. Keep watching, keep liking, stay subscribed, hit the little bell button if you haven't done that yet. And remember, nobody cares. Train harder, and I will see you all tomorrow.